Welcome to the Epic Aesthetic. You're watching High Intensity Training, and this is Vlog 13. So tonight we're checking out the back and bicep routine of my B split. So that's my alternate week of training. And I'm starting off with a pre-exhaust combo for the back. So stiff arm pull downs are my isolation exercise. I'll do a set to failure, and then I'll move immediately next door to the um, pull down machine where I'll do reverse grip pull downs also to failure. And I'll throw in some rest pause at the end there as well to fully toast the muscle belly. So one of the technique points um, some of the subscribers um, pointed out to me a few weeks ago was um, to exaggerate the bend in my elbow a little bit more when doing straight arm pull downs. And what this allows me to do is to get a better range of motion at the bottom of the lift and it allows me to contract the lats a lot harder and right into that peak contracted position. Typically, I would keep my elbows fully extended hard and, and really working the triceps. Um, but what it meant is that I couldn't draw my elbow back as far as, as perhaps possible with a bent elbow and I missed out on a full peak contraction of the lat muscle. So I found that um, although it's kind of hard to see with a hoodie on, I do have quite an exaggerated bend in the elbow even in the contracted position and um, frankly it's, it was a great little tip so thank you um, for the boys that pointed that out and um, it's something you guys might want to try if you're doing the same exercise. So 424 cadence, bend to the elbow. And um, once the elbow comes sort of above the shoulder level, you want to reverse the motion um, because the load starts to drop off quite dramatically at that point. So upon reaching failure, move immediately to the reverse grip pull down. The first exercise was a six to 10 rep range. The second exercise is a three to six rep range. So when doing a pre-exhaust combo, the second exercise of that combo, you need to think of it more like an intensity technique than an actual set in its own right. It's just a method to bring in some additional muscles to help you fully fatigue um, that first target muscle from the first exercise. So the biceps come into play, they're fresh, and they really help me take my already pre-exhausted lat fibers to sort of deeper levels of inroad, deeper levels of fatigue. And hopefully that's gonna give me a stimulus to keep growing. Often what can happen if you just do a pull down straight up or a chin up straight up as your first exercise, your biceps will drop out and um, your lats will essentially be left um, in a state where they're, they're warm, they've been worked hard, but not to full and pure failure in the sort of textbook definition of the term. So what you want to look for is always improvement on the first exercise. That's your metric. If you've improved in your first exercise, your second exercise, it often will be static or it'll only improve slightly. Um, but obviously over time, both exercises will tick up steadily. But again, focus on increasing that first exercise. That's the aim of the game. So I tend to throw in, you know, rest pauses and statics at the back end of my second exercise in a pre-exhaust combo. I just find it's, it's more convenient that way and it's often easier to pull off with a training partner. A lot of those isolation exercises are kind of hard to spot for. Okay, so the third exercise for my back routine is the hammer row. Again, big fan of these machines, isolateral. Um, you can get a great contraction on them and you really just get to focus on pulling the weight, focusing on the target muscle and you don't have to worry about stabilization so much. HIT training really leads you to a path where you use machines a lot. I find that with the slower cadence, machines are often superior if they're well designed like the hammer strength gear. A lot of your generic machines and your cheaper brands, you know, Free weights are often better than those, um, or it's 50-50. Um, but with, with good bits of uh, machinery like hammer strength, again, with those isolateral features, um, honestly, they're excellent tools for high-intensity training. Don't get bogged down thinking that, you know, free weights are for hardcore people and machines are for beginners. Um, at the end of the day, a muscle is a muscle. It recognizes contractile force 
and it stimulates accordingly. It doesn't know whether you're doing a squat or a leg press. It only knows whether those fibers are getting hit hard, taken to failure, and whether they need to adapt to a threatening situation. Okay, so set of those, six to 10 to failure, and focusing on that two second hold um, in that contracted position. Um, at the end of this, I throw in a static hold, and that's basically where I'll pull the weight, you know, under speed into the contracted position, and I'll hold it as long as I can before it starts lowering. Um, if you can, try and lower it under control, but often at this stage of the game, once it starts to go, uh, your arms will just fall forward, as you could see in the video. So, the next exercise is the shrug. I've been training late at night. I've been on this um, McDonald's only diet for, for 20 odd days now, and it's quite low calories, so I think it's really starting to take effect, especially in the back end of my workouts where I'm finding that I'm starting to stall. Um, so unfortunately, I think I might have gone backwards or, or held ground on this exercise, um, which is a little bit upsetting because with traps being my weak point, I'm really trying to improve them. Um, on the A split, I, I do my shrugs first just so I can hit them fresh, um, which is quite effective. Um, but on this split, they're, they're further down the pecking order. So probably next week, I'll make some changes. You know, I've been stuck on six reps for maybe two or three weeks of 120 kilos. Um, so I'll probably back it off to 110 or 100 kilos and just go back to executing perfect form and, and take it from there. Um, but obviously the diet's going to affect me, so just trying to preserve strength and contract the muscle properly to failure is the aim of the game. At the end of the day, I know that I train to failure every session, and really it's only a matter of frequency, how well I've rested, and my nutrition, which determines whether I go forwards or backwards. It's rarely a lack of effort in the gym um, that accounts for, for any stalling in, in my progress. So to finish off, some direct bicep work with machine curls. So I went backwards in this exercise, but considering I improved with my pull downs um, from the week before, and I also improved with my rows, um, typically that hammers the biceps enough. And for beginners or, or even advanced guys, you know, I've said it in my last back video, I'm really contemplating getting rid of direct work for biceps. Um, so maybe in the next routine I'll, I'll do that, but I'll just see it through at least for filming um, with this current split. But yeah, I only managed to get uh, five reps, I think, of 30 kilos on each arm. I mean, the form's good. I went to failure, but, but truth be told, if you're not progressing on the exercise, it, it's a good sign it could be redundant, um, especially when there's a fair bit of overlap with the muscle groups as back and biceps um, often present. So, you know, um, I can either drop the weight back a bit and just go for more reps or, or, or see how I go next week. Um, basically, once I've filmed a routine and uploaded it to YouTube, I won't film that particular workout again for some time, if at all. And that means that, you know, I only now have to worry about shooting, I think, two leg videos and then this entire new split of mine's covered. And then, you know, I'll go back to focusing on training in regular hours um, with proper rest. And that's obviously going to contribute to um, achieving better results. But in order to bring these videos to market, um, you know, I have to train at less than ideal times. But hopefully the videos are appreciated and um, help spread the HIT system around the YouTube fitness community. So I threw in a few um, rest pauses there but you can obviously see I'm quite fatigued. So a little bit of flex for free, um, which I like to throw in there for the fanboys. Um, so good pump there just from one set of direct work. Um, probably need to work on, on posing a little bit, but um, you know, my arms have always been uh, probably a strong point for me, but um, bringing up things like chest and, and stuff like that um, is always of concern as well as my shoulders. Um, so yeah, hope everyone has enjoyed the video. Um, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Um, it's always important that if, if, you, if you've enjoyed the content, 
that you um, help me out and uh, tag your friends and mates in. So thanks for watching.